My job as a futurist is to spend time thinking about what will it feel like to live in the world, what will it feel like to be a human being living on planet Earth 10 or 15 years from now. So it's my job to look at a number of things from social trends, what are people doing, demographic trends, of course, technology trends. I work for a technology company. The big mega trend, the thing that is, this is not new news. Um, as a futurist, and I, I have to tell you this, this, is, this has been going on for 25 years or so. The physical world and the digital world are coming together. They're getting ever closer, and it is this, this, this mega trend that is changing the modern way that we live. Everything from you know, devices becoming connected to the internet of things, mobility, wearables, are part of that. It's part of the digital world creeping and finding its tendrils and bringing them into the world that we live in. And they're all becoming connected to the cloud, to big data, to huge, massive amounts of computing power on the other end. 3D scanners and 3D printers are bridging that gap. Natural interfaces are bridging that gap. So slowly, the digital and the physical world are getting ever closer together. Technology is becoming smaller and smaller. Computing is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. This is a picture of an, of an Intel piece of silicon. This is an atom processor next to a grain of rice on the end of someone's finger. You can see computing is getting quite small. This photograph is one of Intel's technology from five years ago. Okay, so from five years ago, this is how small it was. It's going to get smaller and smaller. This is the key thing that is enabling us now to think about computers becoming wearable. If you dig inside these things, this is a trigate transistor. It doesn't matter that that's what it is, but this is a trigate transistor. This is a 22 nanometer transistor, the building block of the technology that is going to power these devices. This is in production today. We're making hundreds of millions of units of chips based on 22 nanometers. <clears throat> now, I'm a futurist. Where is this going to go? Well, later this year, we will have 14 nanometer technology. Beyond that, 10. Beyond that, 7. Beyond that, 5 nanometers. You're then starting to mess with atoms at that level. This is a coffee mug that we created using Edison, which is um, it's essentially a whole computer, a PC class computer, Pentium PC class computer, on an SD card. This is a wearable device, a baby's outfit, which also has an Edison chip in it and some sensors. It has wireless capability built into it. It allows you to monitor the health of the baby. Is it sleeping well? Has it got issues? What's its temperature? How's it doing? And report that, by the way, to that coffee mug so that you can have a readout display and see how your kids are doing. A trivial, seemingly little a task, but then you can also link that to a baby milk warmer and those sorts of things. So you can start to think about instrumenting the world around us and making everything intelligent. And why wouldn't you do that? Because computing is essentially getting to very low cost, very low power, very low physical size. A lot of designers are not going to want to have to hire a massive engineering group to experiment in this, in this area. It's going to be using Edison and, and devices like this as the building block foundations that will help them to innovate. So as well as computing getting very, very, very small, computing is also getting very, very, very big. The ability to build entire data centers that can crunch huge amounts of numbers and deliver services over the internet. This is important if in the world of wearables because many of these devices are not going to deliver great functionality just on their own. They're going to be connected, and they're going to be connected to these massive computers with access to data and massive amounts of number crunching. And the experience that you will get is the feel that you have one of these big computers on your wrist, on your eyes, on your feet, wherever it is on your body, because it is connected. <clears throat> so the wearables that will be successful in the future are the ones that have the thought up front of how do I use all of that online computing capability? What are the services that I create and wrap around that tiny, tiny device? So the first mega trend, computing getting very, very small. The second one, getting very, very, very big. The third one, natural. For 60 years of the history of computing, we have talked to computers in the way that they needed us to. Whether that was punch cards and tape in the 60s and 70s, or keyboards and mice in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. We're now in the era of touch. And we're going to have to generate a whole new language and a whole new way of communi communicating with wearables devices in order to, for that paradigm to work. If you think about the way we communicated with laptops, um, it was keyboard and mice. That was not appropriate for 
these types of devices, right? We had a whole new language, which is touch. The same way, the right language that works for these devices is probably not going to be the one that we will need for wearables. We have to think about new ways to interact. I think the companies that are on the forefront of that are the ones that are going to be very successful. So it's natural computing approaches that are going to make the difference here. Now this decade, we are going to see a big breakthrough in computing. You're going to see computing that for the first time is able to see the world. Now computers have been able to take a video feed for some time, but the ability for us to see the world, for a computer to understand people, objects, the relationship between objects, to finally actually perceive the world is going to be a big breakthrough. It was, it was what will allow cars to drive themselves, it is what will allow robots to be able to exist in the same uh, space as humans. So big breakthroughs in natural computing in this decade is, of course, already underway. People are spending a lot of time thinking about, well, what are we going to have and where are we going to put it? Right? Should we build a device? A lot of talk about smartwatches. Right? Everybody's in the race to do a smartwatch. Is it going to be Apple? Is it going to be Google? Is it going to be Intel? Is it going to be... There's lots of companies that are working on this. And that's a natural evolution of something that we've been wearing on our wrists for hundreds of years. They're also talking about things that go in your ear, things that go on your eyes. Remember I said before, computing is getting closer and closer to your nerve endings and to your brain. But there are other legitimate places. You could have stuff on the belt. It's a very nice place to store lots of battery power. You could put it on your shoes. Nike's going to make sure that happens. So there are lots of places where it makes sense to put where I was. And people think, well, what should we put where? And that's a legitimate conversation. It's an initial good starting point. But what and where is just not enough. We have to think beyond that. Because if you think about wearables, everybody's talking about wearables is a new thing. This is the first wearable show here in London. Well, yes, wearables are new. That's why we're all here. We're all excited. But it's about wearable tech that is smart and connected. Human beings have been putting things on their bodies for about 80,000 years. Wearables are not actually new. It's just the fact that they are connected and that they are smart that is new. Glasses were invented in the 13th century. They've been around for a very long time. The Inuit figured out how to make the earliest form of sunglasses by taking whalebone and then carving slits into them. These are not new devices, and yet we are now thinking about completely reinventing glasses by making them smart and connected. I can see one right in the audience there. And being recorded. Hello. <coughs> so what can we learn from eyeglasses? They didn't just mitigate our inability to see. They did other things for us too. In many circles, in many cultural circumstances, they signify intelligence. So we haven't yet figured out there's some things that wear will signify that maybe are unintentional. We've got to think about what they're going to signify. But think about the watch that you may or may not have on your wrist right now. How many of you are wearing watches out of interest? Okay, about two-thirds of the room. They signify more about you than just style as well. If you have a nice watch, it says, I have a nice watch. I can afford a nice watch. Look at me. It may be a G-Shock watch from Casio that says, I like to do sports. I'm a sporty person. It talks about your attitude. And it also, it may be very stylish. It may be something about, it's a fashion statement. Wearables do much more for us, much more work for us, than perhaps we realize. It isn't just the functionality of the device. And a lot of the wearables that have come out to date are failing because they don't do that additional work. They haven't thought about that. The device has to fit in with what is important to people. As well as the function of the, of the wearable, thinking about its utility, thinking about how to use it, how it makes somebody their best self. A lot of research that we've done at Intel is people use technology to help them be their best selves, to help them be the, the best parent they can be, the best employee they can be, the best friend they can be. That is ultimately what technology does for them. So there's all these things that functionally they do. It's not just about form, fit, and style, and fashion, and that sort of thing either. Although, of course, that is important. Also be thinking about, what does this technology connect people to? Is it connecting to other people? Is it connecting them to a time, a space, and a place? And ultimately, what is the meaning that it is connecting them to? 
People wear things because they connect them to meaning. Whether it is a watch that was handed down through generations, something they were given as a keepsake from someone that they love, that's one of the reasons people wear them. So thinking about how to personalize and add meaning to these wearables is going to be key. Wearables will only be successful when they do things that people really care about. The things that human beings care about, the things that matter to humans. Because ultimately, it comes back to humans and what they want out of life. Technology is just technology. What matters is what you can do with it. We need to ally ourselves with the best designers, the best creative types in the world to come up with something that people really care about. Because we know we don't have all the answers. Nobody in this room has all the answers. This Make It Wearable Challenge, by the way, to get your attention, has $1.3 million worth of prize money attached to it. The grand prize winner will stand to win half a million dollars. Then there are other lesser prizes around that. This is the invitation. It's an invitation to work with us. Um, we are so excited about wearables, you wouldn't believe. Uh, we have a whole group dedicated to coming up with great technology, great software, all the bits that will be needed by designers to embrace this new opportunity and to create some great stuff. And quite honestly, we don't know where this is going to take us. We want to work with the best minds in the world and invite them to work with us to create something great. That, that really people can stand up at a point and say, wow, this is a breakthrough. This is something we didn't expect. This has really changed our lives. And it's not going to be one thing. Everybody's always talking about, well, what's the next big thing? Well, the next big thing is probably a 1,000 great next big things, or 10,000 next big things. And we're looking forward to allying ourselves with anybody that's excited to work with us and find out what it is together. So if you want to learn more, go to makeit.intel.com. You can learn all about the Make It Wearable Challenge. We're running throughout this year. And as I said, some pretty decent prize money and also some assistance for the, for the ones that look really interesting and promising. Intel will put um, physical people behind that to work with people and help them to develop uh, their ideas and, and bring them to reality. So with that, I really appreciate your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of this wearable summit. Thank you.